Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Bless, 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 bless. Glorious morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Glorious morning. Beautiful. Oh, Inkinga. Good morning, darling. Um, Fatima, good morning. Hey, Pearl, good morning. Um, Betty, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Bless morning. Precious morning. Good morning, wonderful morning. Yvonne, good morning. Um, Mabna, good afternoon, honey. Uh, Nanajua, good morning, sweetie. Good morning, blessed morning, my God. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Every praise belongs to you and you alone. <laughs> Sylvia, morning. Morning, Sylvia. Morning, Sylvia. Mm. My Lord, now listen. <laughs> this morning, uh, we bless God. Oh, good morning. Kafri, good morning, honey. Good morning. Bless morning. Bless morning. Bless morning. Bless morning. Bless morning. Glorious morning. Now, I'm asking this morning, <laughs> those of you on, I am asking you to start sharing. You are going to be blessed this morning. Yes, you are. You are going to be seriously blessed. I want you to, hi, 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 hi. Hi, 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 hi. Um, Osatu, good, good afternoon. Good afternoon, good, oh, from um, Memphis, Tennessee. Wow, good good afternoon. Good morning from um, Tennessee. Good morning. Good morning, Edith. Good morning. Oh, thank you, Edith. Good morning, darling. <laughs> good morning, Aisha. Aisha, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Now, listen to me. I want you, oh, precious Father. I want you, I want you to, um, to invite somebody because guess what? Um, this morning, uh, you are going to learn uh, something. And um, I'm glad that um, I'll, I'll get it ready. And then the Spirit of God just dropped something into my spirit, man. And um, I am going to, um, I am going to speak to you this morning. Um, I don't have any word, but the word of the living God. And so this, oh, Josephine, I am, I am swimming in God's grace and glory. Thank you, Josephine. Thank you for asking, how are you? How are you, Josephine? How are you? How are you? Oh, Jonathan, good afternoon, honey. Oh, Jonathan from South Africa. Thank you, my darling. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for um, for um, joining us this morning. For joining us this morning. And uh, so I'm getting ready uh, to, you know, to come speak the word of the Lord. And the Lord just dropped something into my spirit, man. Hmm. Hmm. Was it was it really love or 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 you were bribed? I mean, did you really? And uh, is a question. Did you really love me or you were bribed? Was it love or bribe? Aish, it's going to be powerful. Was it true love or bribe? Did you love me or you were bribed? Did you love her or you were bribed? Did you love him or you were bribed? Oh, hi, Sue. Good morning, my sweetheart. How are you? How are you? Irama, hi, darling. How are you, honey? How are you? Bless. Um, good morning, sweetie. Good morning. Juliet, good afternoon. Oh, good afternoon from Germany. Good afternoon. Um, Helen, um, good morning from uh, Missouri. Good morning, honey. 
Oh, Nancy, good morning from Pennsylvania. <laughs> good morning, sweetie. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And so, and so, oh, Helen, Helen, you will really be blessed. I mean, did you love me or you were bribed? Did you love her or you were bribed? Did you love him or you were bribed? My darling, it is going to be fabulous. Oh, Nanku. Nanku. Oh, good afternoon from South Africa. Good afternoon. How is South Africa? The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. Hey, my one and only. Um, let me say this to you. This one of my, this daughter of mine, right? Now, back home, um, even though it is spelled Juanita here, that's how they pronounce it. But back home, we call them Juanita. <laughs> And any time I say Juanita, she said, oh, no, 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 no. It's Juanita. I said, no, it's no Juanita. I know she's probably laughing now. I said, no, it's no Juanita. It's Juanita. All right. So Lenny from New Jersey, the Lord bless you, honey. The Lord bless you. Oh, love, joy. Good afternoon, honey. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, Madame. Oh, from London. Wow. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. Oh, Eunice from Ottawa, the Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. Oh, I knew she was going to laugh. All right. Oh, Josephine from Sweden, the Lord bless you, honey. Now, listen, I want Dominique, good morning. I want you. Uh, this, I mean, of course, listen, um, I have thought really about bribery um, literally this week. And then I had, uh, you know, and I say, I say this, um, the, the only prophet in my family, <laughs> he was on. And um, he, he, he taught us, you know, spoke to us a little about bribery. It was, it was deep, very deep. Uh, but this morning, I mean, I, th there was something else really, it, seriously. There was something else I was going to uh, minister to us about. And um, just as I got out of the shower and, uh, you know, the Spirit of the Lord said, bam. And so now my mind is all over the place. Did you really, hmm, did you really love me or you were bribed? Hmm, did you really love to hear? Oh, Mariama from Maryland, the Lord bless you, sweetie. Oh, Peggy, hi, Peggy. Now, did you really love Khadija? Oh, my darling, did you really love me, Rosie? Oh, Rosie from London. Hi, hi, darling. Did you really love me or you were bribed? Did you really love him or you were bribed? Did you really, did you love? I mean, the, the, the word there is love. Now, do you know that the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation, the whole Bible here is literally based on love with all the ordinances and all the commandments and everything that God has said in his word. Now, you and I cannot um, obey fully the word of the Lord um, unless and until um, we understand that this whole Bible here is summed up in one love. But then we have certain questions, you know, and uh, certain things that makes you um, wonder, makes you mm, like mm, your spiritual antenna now is up. Now. There is a whole lot of things going on. And I want to touch a little tiny bit. Pearl, good morning. Vonita, good morning, sweetie. Good morning. Good morning. Khadija, good morning. Um, Aminchop, good morning. Now, there is this thing. And um, it's been there. Nandi, good afternoon. It's been there. Um, but sometimes you wonder how many people understand and how many people um, know exactly what they are doing. Do you know that quote and unquote, we keep repeating this word. I am in love. I love. I love her. I love him. Now, do you know I am not on Abigail Revo, but I want to chip this thing here. Okay. Oh, good morning, Hawa. Good morning. Good morning, DA. Now, you hear people making, um, you know, I love her. I really love her. 
I really love him. Well, there are a whole bunch of us that have entered into various relationships. And I want you to listen to me this morning. We've entered into, now, I want us to, well, thank God, but I want to throw this in there before it skips my mind. Now, we've entered into relationships without us using our brain. Let me repeat it. We've entered into relationships without us using our brain. Now, how do you say that you love somebody? Good morning, blessing. That you love somebody, you are in love with somebody. And yet, because love is not just a heart matter. I want you to listen to me, please. Love is not just a heart matter. Because how do you love? You said, okay, I love. I'm loving. Oh, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. And your brain is not working. In other words, you are just going by feelings. Hello? You are just going by feelings. But you have forgotten that you have to apply sense. You have to apply your brain. And so, listen, you cannot enter into any relationship based on love by the grace of God I say it with all humility I've been legally married legally married I've known my husband for 21 years but legally white wedding church wedding court wedding for 20 years now there are times, I mean, let's, let's, let's be real, all right? Let's be real. There are times I believe that I will really make my husband angry. That probably, <laughs> Helena said, hmm, it's deep, very deep. There are times I believe I make my husband angry that when he turns over on the bed and look at me whilst I'm sleeping and probably snoring, He's probably thinking, who is this woman? I mean, who is she? I mean, I mean, let's be honest. Pearl, you're laughing. Let's be honest. And there are times, I believe, you've turned around to look at your husband and you are wondering, oh, my father, was I really thinking, why did I? Why are you laughing like this, people of God? I'm being very real. I mean, there are times you've turned around and you are like, oh. <laughs> Khadijah's, Khadijah said, Mommy, you are talking. There are times you've turned around and you are like, seriously? I mean, was I thinking? It's like, why did I even get myself in this? I mean, let's be real. Let's be honest, okay? Um, I have come to a place in my life that I, there, there is nothing kosher. There is nothing glorious there is nothing rewarding about telling a lie seriously there is nothing rewarding there is nothing you know nothing about it by tell telling a lie now you know there is the scene where it says i'm called a spade a spade now i have come to my life in this 50 years of existing 50 years and some few months of ex existing here on earth. I'm 50 of existing here on earth that me, Sylvia Blessings, I have vowed, so help me God, I will not lie. Let me tell the truth. Let me get in some kind of trouble, but the trouble will not stay forever. It will just go away. Hello? And that is what I am instilling in my children. Well, tell me the truth. You'll get in some kind of trouble, but guess what? At least you know that you're on the right path. It is better to speak the truth than to cover up. Just keep covering up. Because guess what? When you keep lying, you will always have to find a way to cover it up. I'm saying something. You will always have to find a way to cover it up. And so you come up with one lie or another lie or another lie or another just just to cover up a lie, one lie you told in the beginning.
And so you always find an opportunity. You have to be thinking. I mean, you have to be a genius, you know, to be thinking and how am I going to cover this thing up? How am I? So you, you are always covering things up. There are times where you come to that place that my goodness. Oh yeah, oh yeah, Peggy. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not, the, you know, those people that uh, they know how old they are, but you know, they want you to think they are 30 something. No, I bless God for keeping me. Um, I turned 50 in February and I bless God for keeping me all these years. I'm so grateful to him. Now, look at the many times that we've told people, we've used the word love. I love you. 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 And some have entered into certain relationships, including marriage. And you only went in with feelings. I feel I am in love. I know I am in love. Only for you because you entered into it with love without using your brain thinking that a day is coming anything can happen you can lose your job your husband can lose his job anything can happen and are you because if you are using your brain then you will start putting certain things in place now it, this is just by the way because we are going to go straight into the word you will put certain things in place in other words now you know that i mean even if you are rich all right and when you were entered into the marriage jonathan said oh, oh wow i'm blessed now when you were entering into the marriage um you entered oh your parents probably will ask you do you really know what you are doing oh you know this is the reason why M mommy i am in love i am in love i am in love yes love is mwah. love is beautiful but guess what you cannot enter into a relationship without using your brain. In other words, knowing that even if you are rich, you are not going to be, I mean, we bless God. We pray to God that everything that God gave us in the beginning, we will have it and even more, okay, as the years goes, goes by. But there is a possibility that anything can happen. And so if you are using your brain and not your heart alone, of course, somebody said, bam, you are using your brain and not your heart alone, then you will understand that there are times your spouse will get sick, maybe your spouse will get sick, something will happen. And if that thing happens, what are you going to do? I was talking to one of my um, spiritual daughters, I think a day before yesterday. And I said something to her. I said, yes. It was my son, sorry, um, in um, Columbus, Ohio. And, um, you know, he's getting married this weekend. And um, I'm supposed to be there. And uh, I'm telling him I have to. I'm so sorry because the date they, they, they fixed, you know, uh, something. Well, whatever. Let me just put that on the shelf. And so I'm telling him. And I've been talking to him. And I said, listen, let me say this to you. I am not saying as a spiritual mother, because your ma his mom is in Ghana, and he's taking me like a mother for, for, for years. And I really, I adore him. I respect him as a spiritual son. And I'm saying to him that marriage is wonderful. It is glorious, my dear. It is glorious. But my thing is, don't just enter into it because you are in love. Because trust me, one of these days, you will feel out of love. When you are angry, when you are upset, when certain things are going on and you don't understand, you, you are wondering, I mean, what in Jesus' name was I thinking? Getting my, So one minute you are in love, the next minute you, you just want to kill the person. I mean, just to say, I mean, it's like, you, you know what? Get out of my way. Don't even talk. It, this is real. But the thing is, 
the Bible says, who, I'm paraphrasing, who will not sit down and count the cost when he or she wants to build a house. In other words, if you want to build a house, you have to sit down and count the cost. How much is it going to cost me just for the foundation? How much is it going to cost me just to put up the pillars? How much is going to cost me when, I mean, the windows, the kind of windows I want, um, the security system I want to put in place, how much is it going to cost? Now, most of us, and we are going to go into God's word because I want to shock you this morning. Now, how much, or how many, excuse me, of us will sit down and how do you count the cost? You use your brain. You use your brain. How many of us will sit down and use our brain before we make that move or make that move? Now, if, for example, you are marrying a, a, a pastor, all right? Um, you are working and uh, you are marrying, um, you or a man of God um, sees you and the man of God wants to marry you. And of course, it's glorious to marry a man of God. But sometimes people don't understand the work you have to put in. You have to have a big heart. Oh, precious father, you have to have a big heart. In other words, when you marry a man of God, you will go through both the bad, the good, the beautiful, and the ugly. You will go through every. Trust me, my darling. My husband is a man of God. Trust me. You will go through all these stages. There are times where it will look like, all right, or if you are, if you are involved with anybody in any position, there are times, <coughs> Araba said, precious father. I like that. There are times where um, you see um, people, especially women. There are times where you see um, women, even though your husband may be um, 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 spiritually alert. There are times where, you know, um, there are women that, that have this um, infatuation, whatever they call that thing, whatever they call that thing. With your husband, they, they, I mean, they, they, I mean, it's, it's there, and um, their main agenda is not that they love the man. They don't really love the man, but in, in fact, what do you, what do you say that word again? Whatever that is. Now, and um, you know, um, they are, they are calling your 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 husband. Um, we hours of the morning, they are they are they are. I mean, they, they are sending unnecessary te pearl, <laughs> unnecessary text. There are times where people come to church, especially women, come to church and they have certain thank you prayer. They have certain clothes on and um, they are ATM. It's, it's all over the place. I mean, and they are doing everything to entice. And, and you, you are so confused. Now listen to me. If you don't have a heart and you don't know and, and you don't know, listen to me, and you don't know that, okay, infatuation, all right, and you, thank you, Sue, and you don't know that this is part of the package. Listen to me, my darling, listen to me. It is part of the package. It comes with it. And so now you are not only preparing your heart in the name of love, but you are also getting your brain prepared. In other words, you are using your brain that all these things are part of the package. You cannot, let me say this to you, you cannot marry a man of God if you are a woman who is not secured. Insecurity. 
you are not comfortable in your own skin because whether you like it or not there are people that will come around that you will make you so uncomfortable let me say this to you be real i'm being real they will make you so uncomfortable that if you are not if you are not comfortable in your own skin you don't have self esteem you don't know who you are and the part or the place you have in your husband's life and heart my darling you will always have a heart attack years ago and we are going to go into god's word years ago my i was not even a pastor my husband was not a pastor but my husband is um, a prayer warrior men the man can pray and so my husband um, the church that we used to uh, be in, that's like hmm, maybe 17, 17, 18 years ago. And so he, he was leading, you know, he would lead prayer when we go for all night services. Because every Friday, where we were, every Friday was an all night. Every Friday was an all night. And so we'll go to all night. And somebody said, Chai, we'll go to all night prayer. Um, you know, meetings, and uh, he would lead prayer, and it was glorious. And so now, I realize that I'm being very real, and we are going to look at a man by the name Samson. He's the one we are going to look at this morning. And, um, you know, I mean, of course, people will just come to him and ask him for prayer, and he will graciously graciously pray for them and pray for them there was this one particular lady that was possessed i mean that's the word i can use because anytime we came to church i mean she would just manifest and the man of god the man of the man of god the head pastor of the church i mean we'll pray 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 pray, pray. the demons will go out and then by the time she comes back again the following friday is even worse than the previous friday and so we realize that what is happening is this. When she comes and the spirits are cast out, when she leaves church and go back, she'll do things because now when the demons leave, she, she doesn't have the control. She, because this, this spirit put her in control and in charge. And, um, you know, um, she was literally a physical bully. I mean, physically bully. She was a bully. And so... This spirit made her very, very important. And uh, if I say important, not in a very good way, uh, but, you know, very, very conniving, very manipulative, you know, that kind of a thing. And she felt really good because then people were really paying attention to her. She felt very good. And so when the demons are cast out, when she leaves, nobody knows what she does. And all of a sudden... I think she, 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 she goes back and it's like a dog that has vomited and go back and licks back the vomit. And so she goes back and then takes the, the spirits back again. And so by the time she comes back on, on Friday and she will always be in church on Friday. It's worse. Worse, 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 worse. So one day she comes to church. We were in a 40 days of fasting. Um, the head pastor of that ministry now has gone to be with the Lord. His name was Ousu Teburi. I'm going to be with the Lord. <clears throat> and uh, one day we come to church. We're in a 40 day fasting. And so we're going to church every evening. It was on a Wednesday. I will never forget as long as I live. Wednesday we come to church and it was prayer. Oh, prayer. We're praying, praying. People were praying. Then all of a sudden, this lady started manifesting so in the manifestation um the pastor that that time um also tebri was still alive so he was there at that time and so he started praying for the lady and praying and praying and praying and praying and praying and, praying. and casting the demon and casting the demon and casting the demon so this demon will go out and that one will go out and that one will go out i mean a lot was just getting out and getting out. so this particular 
demon he was casting out, he told everybody to get out. Just <laughs> to get out, you know, the the um, the um, 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 the aisle. And so uh, he says, everybody get because people were, you know, standing there watching. He said, everybody get out of the aisle, move, move out of the aisle, move, move, move. So people were just moving, and um, in you know, and then he says, and at, 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 it was I think it was kind of cold that time. He said somebody should open the main door, so the main door was opened. He says, open the main door. We are commanding this particular demon to just get out and open the door. So the door was opened, and uh, you know, praying and praying and praying and praying. The church pray. So we are all clapping our hands and you know, we're praying and praying and praying. And so the um, demon just, you know, left the lady. Right after service, I'm standing, talking to my husband. Just standing there talking. I'm saying something to you. Just standing there talking to my husband. Now, this lady saw me standing there talking. Guess what? Did not even say, excuse me. Or can I please? Now, to me, that, that's like, you know, please, can I talk? No? Guess what? If he's here, I'm here talking. She comes all the way from the back here and stands in the middle. <clears throat> in the middle. And it's... And I'm like, Father, have mercy. I mean, if it was not God, I mean, trust me. I would have just opened my mouth and said something. No. But guess what? I had already prepared my brain that these things are bound to happen. They are part of the package. Now, so if you are not ready, if you are not prepared, if your mind is not made up, and so don't Tell me, don't. <laughs> I like that. Nephew is a physical demon. Now, don't tell me that you are in love. Oh, I love her. I love him. And in the name of love, but you are not using your brain. There is a possibility that down the line, something will happen. Maybe you will lose your job. And, and what I was saying is this. Now, you are married to a man of God. And I'm saying to you, because I am married to one. Married to a man of God is not glamorous. Let me say this to you. If you are married to a man of God, it is not, it doesn't only come with glamour. My darling, when he, he, your husband goes out doing God's work and casting out demons. When he comes home, some of these demons will follow him to his house. Some of the demons will get up in the middle of the night and start attacking. Now, if you are only saying, I am in love, you are not using your brain. You don't know how to pray. You don't know how to fast. And you are only standing behind your husband. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Prophet Dami, I didn't know you were even on. The Lord bless you, sir. He says, so true, Omar. And you don't know how to pray. And you don't know how to fast. And you think it is just beautiful for you to wear your beautiful hat. And for you to be wearing your high heels and following your husband. And all you are doing is to get, you know, get, good morning, ma. Good morning, a woman of God. Good morning, woman of God. And you think that is it. My darling, you will have a total shock. Because there are times when your husband's hands will be weak. As a man, it doesn't matter how powerful he is. There are times where his hands will be weak and you, the woman, have to pray him through. You think marrying a man of God is glamorous? Wait until you marry one. My darling, wait until you marry one. Wait. It is not glamorous. 
And so don't go about saying, I am in love. Yes, love is wonderful. Love is glorious. But guess what? You have to not only use your heart, but you have to use your mind. Somebody's nephew said total shock. Yes, you have to use your mind, your mind, and your mind, your brain tells you that now you are entering into marriage. Now that you are entering into marriage, it's a possibility that you will lose your job. It's a possibility. Nobody says evil will come, but think about it. There's a possibility that you will lose. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I enjoyed life even though when we got married we didn't have nothing nothing i mean i've shared that many times we didn't really have nothing i remember me cooking and uh, myself and my husband have to spread the um the bed sheet bed sheet on a wooden floor i would spread the bed sheet we didn't have no dining table we didn't have nothing i mean as a matter of fact i think one of these days <clears throat> i think i'm supposed to maybe i will um I'll let my husband come and share our testimony. Maybe you understand it better. You know the twin bed? The twin bed, yeah. The twin bed was the bed. I, I even think the twin bed was is kind of a little big. There was this student bed, very tiny bed. And it was just me and my husband at that time. So the two of us were sleeping on that bed. We didn't have no carpet, no carpet, nothing. And so, listen, there is no way you will go and sleep and it's winter and the floor is cold and so maybe that is what drew us very close because listen even if i am angry okay now i can just get up and probably sit in the sofa or whatever but you are angry there is nowhere to sleep and so you have no choice but to sleep on that small little bed now you cannot say that i'm angry and I'm uh, um, why are you laughing like this? You cannot say that I'm angry and so I am going to sleep at the edge of the bed and, and my husband, yeah, the husband, you are angry, I'm sleeping at the edge of the bed and then the wife, I'm sleeping on that side and, and sometimes, you know, <laughs> the confession of the preacher. I'm, I'm going to sleep on that, that, that far side because I'm angry. I, I don't want to touch him. He shouldn't even touch me. Don't touch me. Don't. Let me tell you something. Around that time, it was not like that. And so the bed is this small. Peggy said, the bed, the bed is this small. So whether you are angry, whether you are sad, whether you are what, you will have to, your body will have to be part. And you will have to touch his body somewhere. Because if you are angry and I don't want you, I don't want your body to touch my body, the next place you are going to is on the floor. Because the bed was this big. You are going down. On the, stop laughing, people of God. You are going down. That's exactly where you are going. I mean, on the floor. And so, whether you are angry or what, you are able to make up. That time, the scriptures worked. And it should be working. <laughs> oh, Shavon says, wisdom speaks. Yeah. That time, my darling, you don't have any choice. And so, even if you are angry, by the end of the day, hello, the anger have to just disappear because you end up sleeping on the same bed and the bed is this big and so either you are on the floor and do you know the bible says that when two of us mm -hmm, one is cold then the other one <clears throat> you will find heat by getting close to the other one but if you are angry i don't want to do that i am so upset now the bed is this big. And so, hello, you make me angry, sleep on your own side. Leave me alone. Don't bother me. But guess what? You have to use your brain in the sense that anything can happen. And are you prepared when it happens? Anything can happen. I don't know why I'm going this route, but I feel in my spirit there is a woman watching me and you are about to marry. And the man you are about to marry is a man of God. 
Now listen to me. A time will come. The man of God, you know, has already told you that he is called to full-time ministry. In other words, you are going to be working and the man is going to be doing ministry. Use your brain. Why am I saying this to you? You have to understand that the fact that he's doing ministry, there are times when he will get tired. Ministry is not a joke. Let me say this to you. If you think ministry is glamorous, yes, there is glamour. But, but you see, there are some that have made the thing look like this is how ministry is supposed to be. When you were a man of God, this is how it's supposed to be. And so the young ones have this picture before them that this is how it is. My darling, those that are giving you the picture that this is how it is, ask them how long they have been in ministry. Some of them have been in ministry 30 years. Some of them have been in ministry 35 years. Some of them have been in ministry 25 years. And so you are now coming up. And so don't try to be like them because you have no idea how long they've been in the ministry. Now, I, I, think, I still feel so strong in my spirit that I'm speaking to a lady that is about to marry a man of God. Listen to me, my darling. The glamour is there. But there are times you will wish my father, my maker, why did I get myself in this? Those times will come. But if you are a prayerful woman, if you are a woman of the word, if you are a woman who have allowed God to give you a big heart, that listen, it comes with all this. There is something I have done all my life. And we are, open your Bible with me to the book of Judges. There is something I have done <clears throat> all my life. That's right. That's right. That's right. There is something I have done all my life. And it's not because my husband told me to do it. Or there was something he did that made me take that step. No, I was brought up that way. When I'm working with my husband and uh, my husband sees a friend, somebody he knows, and he stops and is talking to the person, I don't stand. I don't stand there to listen to what he are saying. It, I was not brought up that way. And so when I'm working with my husband, he sees somebody and he's talking to, he knows the person, he's talking to the person. Guess what? I, I keep walking. I just say hi and I just keep walking. Um, it's, it's, it's not, it's not me. I don't No, It's not me. So I will not even stand there. Why? What are they talking about? Who is? No. I mean, I just keep walking. And I've noticed that it's something that gets to my husband once in a while. And so whilst I'm going, then my husband will call me. Oh, do you know my wife? And so, you know, then I will have to come back, you know, and then the person um, you know, my husband would say, this is my wife, Sylvia, and then I have to greet the person. So I, you know, I realized that it was really, I mean, it was kind of getting, I believe it was getting to him. Well, you say hi, just, and then you are walking, then I have to call you back and I introduce you, you know, to whoever I'm talking to. But it's, it's still, it's, it's, it's part of me. It's, I don't know if some way, somehow, if I can come out of that. But something that I've done all my life. And I believe that I am giving him the respect. That's, that's what I believe. Because that was what I was taught when I was growing up. That you respect people by not standing there and listening to their conversation. And so I just, I keep walking. And it's part of me. But there are times when he might be talking to somebody and inwardly 
inwardly, there is this uneasiness in my spirit, man. Uneasiness in my spirit, man. Then maybe after he's done talking, I will either, I mean, those days I used to do it, but no more. That I'll ask him, who are you talking to? And he never complained. He never complained and said, why do you have to know who I'm talking to? No. No. God is, no. He never complained. He will say, oh, it's this person or that person. And then I'll say, oh, okay. And that, that's, that's just about it. When I feel very uncomfortable in my spirit, man. There is a man in the Bible. And his name. Is Samson. Samson, a man that had a covenant with God. His covenant with God was so unique that now God now told Samson what the covenant is all about. There are some of us we we know, you no, know, we say it all the time. You know, I have a covenant with God. I have a covenant with God. Now, when you are in a covenant with a deity, a God, a spirit, something, they normally will tell you in the covenant what they want, what they like, what they don't like. So that because you know their likes and dislike, you will want to do your best to keep the covenant going. And so... The dislike, you try your best not to do the dislike. Samson was in a covenant, not with a mere man. Samson was in a covenant with Elohim, God himself. And so, now God tells Samson that because of the covenant I have with you, now, you are a Nazarite. In other words, you are not supposed to drink strong drinks, alcoholic beverages, that's number one. You are not supposed to shave your hair, cut your hair. And so, and so I don't have time to be going through it, but it is so powerful. I mean, the covenant between um, Samson and God, I'm praying that maybe next week, I'm, I'm just praying I don't just come in and just talk. I pray. I ask God, what do you want your people to know or, or study? That's the reason why I come up with what I come up with. And so if the Lord gives me, go ahead. Because it is so deep. The covenant between Samson and God was so deep and powerful. Now, when we read the Bible, we may see it as, oh, it was just, oh, don't cut your hair. And, uh, you know, don't drink alcohol. No, it was more than that. It was deeper deeper than that and um, you know that it is women who the bible tells us that our hair is our glory right the hair we have is our glory and um, literally we are not really supposed to be you know cutting our hair and you know short hair and all that because the bible tells us that our hair is our glory that is the reason why some of us you know once in a while will just, you know, do a weave and do a wig, put on a wig and all that. Now, Samson, a man, a man, the Lord said to him, through his mother and father, don't cut his hair. Now, if the hair means your hair, means glory, don't cut. That is the reason why when you have a dream that somebody have cut your hair in a dream, my darling, don't just get up and say, oh, I dreamt somebody cut my hair and that's it. My sweetie, you better go on a fasting. It means that your glory have been cut off. When you have a dream and your hair is cut or you did not see Anybody cutting your hair, but a part of your hair is literally cut. You see, it, it looks like it's cut. My darling, the enemy is after your destiny. The enemy is after your glory. Don't joke around. You better start 
taking it seriously. Go into some serious fast and begin to contend with the enemy for your glory back. Because you see, when the enemy, when your hair is cut, oh, Father, help me. When your hair is cut in the dream, it means that it has been done in the spirit. Now, there are things that are done in the spirit that sometimes it will manifest quickly. There are times where it will take time to manifest. And so the ones that it takes time to manifest, you have already forgotten that you had a dream like that a long time ago. And so all of a sudden, the man who is supposed to be your glory, your husband, the head, begins to, ma begin to uh, misbehave. And then you see problems upon problems upon problems. Now, all of a sudden, the marriage is going down. And then before you know it, you are separated. And before you know it, you are divorced. Why? Because spiritually, your head, your hair, that also stands for your glory, has been cut. And so either your marriage is in trouble, if you're a married woman, or your glory, your physical glory, is gone. And so you realize that all of a sudden, it's like people are agitated when they see you. People are just angry. Things you normally say that they did not mean, mean anything. Now, you say stuff and people are reading deep into it. I mean, you probably you say to maybe a friend, um, I can't believe sometimes you act very silly. Now, the word silly, you said it to the friend many times or your husband, whatever. But this particular day, you use the same word silly and they are looking for um, instrument to digest the word silly. What do you mean, I am silly? They begin to digest. Do you know the meaning of silly? And then they begin to digest. I mean, they're going to take an instrument and digest it. I mean, the, the, the S, what does it mean? And, and, and I mean, I mean, and the I, what, what do you mean? And I'm telling you, I mean, they, they begin to digest. It's, it's something else. Now, all of a sudden, the marriage starts going down, 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 down. And then gradually, it completely collapses. Judges chapter 15. Let's start from there. Um, let's, you know what, let's start from, let's start from this one and then I will jump to verse 16. Let's start from this one. I think that will give us a better understanding. Let's start from this one. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> Hiya. I think I've taught um, this already um, about um, um, Adoni Bezek and um, I don't want to go back into Adoni Bezek and um, you I mean, I've thought that before so um, <clears throat> let's 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 move on from there because I've thought I've, I've thought about Adoni Bezek before and so um, because then Adoni Bezek, then Barak, and all these people. So let's see. I want to. Yeah, then it goes to Gideon. It's a lot. Oh my God. Where do I start from? I don't want to start from the verse 15. Um, all right. All right. So, um, mm, chapter 13. Let's start from there. Chapter 13. Let's do that. All right, chapter 13. So Judges chapter 13, let's start from there. That will help us. Chapter 13. Let's start from verse 1. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines 40 years. Can you believe that? 40 years. And there was a certain man of Zorah, of the family of Danite, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren, and bear not. And his wife was barren. 
and bear not. I'm going to just pause here for a second. If you read the Bible, you will realize that any woman that the Bible talks about that she was barren, the first child that came out of the woman's womb was either a prophet or a mighty man of valor. Anybody that the Bible said or recorded that the wife, oh, this man, the wife was barren, and the wife was barren, and the wife was barren. Anything that came out of the, and most of the time, these barren women, the first um, child that came out of their wombs was a man, a boy. Most of time, most of the time, a boy. Now, in those days, and even in this time, in the time that this dispensation we are in, when a man in the Jewish culture, when a man and his wife bring forth and it's a boy, all right? Now, the Bible talks to us, and I really don't want to go into that, but, but the Bible tells us when you start reading the, uh, the, the, um, the book of Exodus, um, um, Leviticus, Numbers, it tells us, and Deuteronomy, it tells us that when um, God gave Moses an instruction, and the Lord told Moses, that anything that comes out, the Bible calls it the matrix, all right? A couple of years ago, they, um, Hollywood came out with a movie called The Matrix, all right? Matrix literally means firstborn. It's in the Bible. Matrix means firstborn. And so, or the womb, okay? So he says, anything that comes out of the womb, the first thing that comes out of the womb belongs to God. The thing that comes out of the womb belongs to God. And so your firstborn belongs to God. And God told Moses that tell the children of Israel that if you have um, a whole bunch of, of flock, the firstborn or the first, the first link, the first link that come out of the of the the the, um, the womb of a sheep belongs to God. That's the first link. When you were a farmer, you were a farmer. Um, your um, when you you know you uh, it's um, the time of harvest, and the first harvest, the first fruit you bring out of your farm or you know your crop also belongs to God. Now in those days, and I believe they still do it. In certain, certain churches, they call it harvest, okay? So you, you bring the fruit, the tomatoes, the orange, the, the, you bring that. And then in our, okay, so we have the first fruit, we have the firstling, and then we have um, um, the firstborn, okay? So every firstborn belongs to God. So if you have a firstborn, and that firstborn was not dedicated to God. My darling, hey, I'm not talking about firstborns, but you know, anyway, let's go on. When you allow the Lord to teach you his word, when you begin to speak God's word, then he starts, the spirit of God will start downloading into your spirit a whole lot. And so the firstborn, the firstling, I'm not going in there, but that's also very powerful. Um, teachings as well and so verse 2 judges 13 2 what's my time mm -hmm. judges 13 2 and the children of israel did evil again in the sight of the lord and the lord delivered them into the hand of the midianites 40 years and there was a certain man of zara um, the family of danites whose name was manoah and his wife was barren and born not verse 3 and the angel of the lord appeared unto the woman Let me continue. Because I see something right here by revelation. There, verse 3. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold now, thou art barren and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Now therefore, beware, I pray thee, 
and drink not wine, nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing, for lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head, for the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistine. Now, isn't that powerful? That the children of Israel have been under manipulation and control under the Philistine for the Bible says 40 years. 40 years. And now God appears to a woman, a buried woman, and is telling the buried woman that you shall have a son and the son will now come and be a deliverer. Number one, when the angel came and said that to the woman, the woman was not pregnant yet. The angel came and said, you are going to be pregnant. Now, my logical brain is now working. Okay. These people have already been there for 40 years. You are not even pregnant yet. So when are you going to sleep with your husband for you to be pregnant? And you go through nine months of pregnancy and the child will grow. How old would the child get to? Oh, Exodus, my darling, chapter 13. How, how old would the child get to before the child becomes a deliverer? Is he going to be a deliverer when he's five years old? He can do that. Well, of course, anything is possible with God. I understand that. Is he going to be a deliverer when he's 20? And so now, look at this. Oh, Ephia, Exodus, chapter 13, my darling. Oh, Judges, sorry. Judges, chapter 13, Ephia. Judges, chapter 13. All right. Um, verse 6. Judges chapter 13. I started from verse 1. I'm now in verse 6. Verse 6 says, Then the woman came and told her husband. Then the woman came and told the husband. The angel came to the woman, spoke to the woman. Where was the man? The angel came and spoke to the woman. Now the angel has spoken to the woman. And the woman now went and told the husband. Why didn't the angel go to the man? The man is the head. Why didn't the angel go to the man? But the angel went to the woman. And the woman went and told the man. We'll talk about it. And the woman came and told her husband, saying, a man of God came unto me. Now look at this. One, the Bible says an angel. Now the woman is not saying an angel, but then the woman said a man. Do you know that the Bible tells us that we should be very careful because some of us have entertained angels unawares. Because there are certain angels that come in the form of a man or a woman. Mm -hmm. Angels can come in the form. My God, my time is running. A couple of years ago, I was living in a place called Parkchester. Um, in that um, facility there. They don't have um, washing machines and so you have to go out of um, you know um, the building and um, there are you know laundry mats so you have to go and do um, laundry there I had gone I've taken my I had one child I've taken my child to school and I'd gone to put my stuff in the um, washer and so I came back into the building and uh, I was going back to pick it up from the washer and put it in the dryer now, just as it was, it was summertime, I was the only person, you know, it was a small path that, you know, you walk, you know, just to cut short so that you don't go all the way around there. And so I was going through the, you know, a small path there to get to the laundry mat. 
Now, I like you know, when I'm walking, I just look down and I lift up my hand. That's, um, that's, that's how I walk. And so here, I'm walking and my head was down and um, I was singing and worshiping. As a matter of fact, that was exactly what I was doing. So I was, you know, just doing that. Then I, was, I lifted up my head and there was this tall white guy, white man, very tall, like huge, huge and tall. And he stood right in front of me when I, and he was smiling. And then he says, oh, I have a headache. I have a headache. Oh, I have a headache. He was in shorts. Yeah, in shorts. And um, I, re I remember um, it was boots. He was wearing a boot. But, you know, my mind is like, oh, my God. It's summertime and it was so hot. But, you know, very tall, very tall white guy. I, I can still, you know, the picture is right in my, you know, in my conscience. And um, he has a blonde hair. And um, very tall and, you know, huge like this. So he stood in front of me and then he says, oh, I have a headache. And that he smiled at me and I smiled at him. Just as I, because the lane is kind of small, so you have to just, you know. So I, you know, I moved this way and he smiled and I smiled at him. And um, he passed me. And just like that, I said, ah, why did I just smile? Let me pray for him. It was less than two seconds. By the time I turned around, the guy was nowhere to be found. He was gone. Gone, gone, gone. He was nowhere to be found. Now, where the lane is, there are no um, apartments where you say, that, oh, maybe he branched to this apartment or he branched to that apartment. No, it was a small you know, pathway. The guy was gone. Now, I'm, I'm having chills all over my body. And so, um, I was done with it. And in the evening, uh, it was a Wednesday evening, it was Bible studies. So, I go to Bible studies in the church we're in. I go to Bible studies and... Um, Guess what? When I went, they were talking about angels. The woman of God who was going to be with the Lord was talking about angels. And so now, um, you know, it says, well, some of us have entertained angels, you know, unaware. And um, some, a gentleman was sharing an experience he had at the hospital um, where um, he was sick. And uh, he was admitted at the hospital. And, um, you know, um, a nurse came in there. A nurse came in there um, with a doctor, and um, the um, she they were trying to change, you know, the medication that you know they, they have given. So this doctor walks in and says, you know what, um, the medication they gave you was not a good medication, and that uh, this is this is exact exact medication you're supposed to be taking, and uh, so um, the doctor now turns to the nurse and tells the nurse, um, make sure that you get this medication. Because whatever, whoever wrote this thing was not right at all. So get the medication. So they left. It was a testimony that a man was giving. So they left. Now he said, as they left, a nurse came back in with a doctor. And then um, they started, you know, push, putting um, medication in this um, IV that was there. And then, you know, the, the nurse was pumping this medication in there and so the gentleman says he told them that what are you doing and then the nurse says we are putting this medication and then he says what's the medication so he told the, the, the patient and then the patient says no that is not the medication you're supposed to be giving me because the doctor another doctor and the, and the nurse was here and um, they said this is the medication I'm supposed to be taking so now the nurse now looks at the medication and the nurse runs out. Says, I'll be right back, runs out. Guess what? The nurse was about to make a horrible mistake. She could not read what the doctor wrote down. And so she took another medication. But thank God for angelic assistance. Thank God for angelic intervention. That if that angel who came in the form of a doctor and another one came in the form of a nurse, that guy would have been dead. He would have been dead. And so that was when I also shared my testimony that I met this guy and uh, he said, oh, I have a headache and um, I did not pray, but I turned around to pray and the guy was gone. And that was when the woman of God says, I believe with all my heart, 
that God was willing and ready to give you a dangerous, dangerous healing anointing that if you had prayed for that man right there, she said healing, anointing for healing would have been absolutely, it, it would have been so easy that just as you lift up your hand, healing, incurable diseases will take place. And since that day, I never stopped. I said, Lord, let the angel come back. Let the angel come back. And I've never seen that angel. But there are times where, I mean, I've shared this with you, uh, where I was, uh, I used to live in New Jersey and uh, I was coming from New Jersey. I had come to church in, in New York and I was going back. I was living in New Jersey. I was going back to New Jersey and all of a sudden it started raining. Oh, the rain was so bad. I couldn't see anything before me. And I was on the highway. I was on the, um, on the highway there and uh, it was pouring. I couldn't see anything before me. I mean, if I say couldn't, couldn't see a thing. Now, I don't know if I am in the middle of the road or I am off the road because it was pouring. My wipers, I mean, was going and I still couldn't see anything. And so now I decided to park in my mind. If I park, I don't know if I'm parking well, if I'm not parking well, and I'm calling on the name of Jesus. Oh my God, I'm Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. I'm just coming from church. Help me, I mean, it was poor. If I say poor, I couldn't see. All of a sudden, I decided to stop the car. My wiper, one of them, decided to give up the ghost. And so, it was only one working. I remember it so well. I had a Ford Escort around that time. So one of them decided to just give up the ghost. So one of them was like this. And then the other one was working. So it's like this one. And this one is working. And I knew you would love. This one is working. And then the other one is like this. So it's like, you know, like this. Oh, God. So I'm now, I'm somebody who said, I'm freaking out. What am I going to do? Oh, Father, help me. And I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying. All of a sudden, I see a white man with um, a... Um, a rain raincoat on and he's covered the the hood is on the head Kadama the hood is on the head like this and then I was trying to park didn't know where I was parking I don't know if I was on the road or have gotten off the road I don't even know what was happening so because I was so afraid so now I'm I'm driving and all of a sudden I see somebody in um, um, a rain jacket, a rain coat, with the hood on, and it's passing right in front of my car. And I press the brake, and it go, I press, and now I'm like, oh, I'm done, oh God, oh God, oh God. I mean, it was something else. Then it looked like slow motion. That, I mean, I was so afraid, like everything was like slow motion to me. Now I see the guy, passing right in front of the car it was a white guy but the hood is covered his head with the hood and so he's going right in front of my car just passing right very slow just passing right in front of my car and then lifted up his head and looked at me in the car there and then um you know that that was how i you know realized that he was a he was a you know he was a you know a white guy because he lifted up his head that was you know so he moved right in front of me like this and felt like slow motion right in front of me and then turned around and looked at me and then smiled had this smile on his face and then did this and just as he, he i never heard his word just did this and just as he passed right in front of the car that was it couldn't see him again couldn't see him again and um in I stayed in the car, I'm praying. 
in all kinds of tongues. I am praying in English. I'm praying in Ga. I am praying in the Chi language. I'm praying in Fanti. Oh, all kinds of prayer. I have missed the prayers in different languages. And I'm praying and I'm crying. And I'm saying, the Lord, I don't want to go to heaven right now. Oh, my God, my God, my God. And just like that, it may be 10 minutes later. It felt like it had not even rained. The rain just went just like that. Angels are very real. Angels are very, very real. Um, physically, I've seen a couple. I've been to meetings, meetings where um, in the midst of the meeting, the Lord opens my eyes and I see angels in the meeting. Meetings that I was, you know, maybe a guest preacher there seed angels here so they are real all right and so verse six then the woman came and told her husband let me go like a time oh great, wonderful it's now 10 glorious Woo! it's 11 o'clock precious father then the, then <laughs> then the woman came and told her husband saying a man of god came unto me and his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God. The man of God, he says, and a man came to me, but the man had a countenance. There was something about that man. He is a man, all right. He has the features of a man, all right. But there is something about the man. And the countenance, was like the countenance of an angel of God. Look at it. Very terrible. But I asked him no ways he was. Neither told me his name. Well, I saw the bean. I saw the bean, all right. Uh, but I was kind of afraid that I didn't ask him, where did you come from or what is your name? I did not gather that boldness. Some of you are praying and say, Lord, I want to see an angel. Oh, Lord, let me see an angel. Oh, I want to see an angel. Oh, and you know, you, you have a way of doing it. Oh, Lord, I want to see an angel. Hey, some of you, if the Lord should allow you to see an angel, you will run. Do you hear me run? you will run because some of these angels, if you see them in their real form, oh, you will run. You, you will be terrified. Terrified. <laughs> terrified. Now, the first time, <laughs> somebody said, if you see a warrior angel, you will faint. The first time I saw an angel, I was like nine, nine years old when I saw an angel. I was in a boarding school in um, Accra, St. John's Preparatory. I was in a boarding school. And um, we had gone to dinner and we had come back to the dormitory because it was a boarding school, come back to the dormitory. And uh, whilst we were in the dormitory, that evening, it was a Saturday evening. In the evening, people come to visit, you know, parents come to visit their children. And they'll bring them food and cook, I mean, real cooked food. And they'll bring them a whole lot. But I really didn't have anybody coming to visit me. Higher. So that day, everybody, parents were coming. Either was auntie coming and uncle coming, this one coming and that one coming. I was in the dormitory, um, and uh, the lady that was the, the madame of the dormitory was called Elizabeth, Auntie Elizabeth. And so, that day, I felt so lonely. Because people came, parents came visiting their children. And I was one of those people, when they put you in that school there, maybe they'll come visit you once every two months. And so I went and I sat at the dormitory 
in front of the dormitory there was a, a small um, um, it looks like um, a wall there so I sat there and I was crying and I was singing I said yeah in those days there was this and I'm going to be done well, I, I guess we'll continue and um, in those days uh, there was this this song I don't even know who you know came out mm. I don't even remember the whole song but oh my goodness ah Bishop Mc, my God man oh man of God the Lord bless you wow the Lord <laughs> whoa whoa the Lord bless you man of God the Lord bless you I salute the oil of God over your head sir the Lord bless you the Lord bless you and so oh wow wow the Lord bless <laughs> The Lord bless you. And so um, uh, I remember sitting there and um, I was uh, I was singing. And I don't remember all the, 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 the lyrics to the song, but I remember the, um, the chorus. And um, something, something. Um, uh, it was a, a Ghanaian song. If you don't concern a dear sign, you better bon crow and crow and need your grow. Something like that, yeah. If you don't concern a dear sign, if you don't concern a dearie sayin' So I was just singing that song and I was sitting down and I was just singing the song and I was crying because nobody came visiting. Crying, crying, crying. And some of these children, oh God, they have the trinity of self, me, myself and I. And so it's my mother that brought it to me. You are not getting the peace. Oh Jesus. And so now I'm sad and I'm singing, sitting there and I'm, I'm you know, I'm singing and I'm crying. I'm crying. And guess what? Then I realized other children who were just like me, they didn't have, you know, a whole bunch of people visiting, came and sat around me. So we were all singing the song. I was singing. They were singing. Some of them didn't even know why I was crying. They started crying. Have you ever met people like that? They don't even know why you're crying. They also start crying. Mm hmm Oh, you know that song, Araba? Araba, you know that song? Wow. So that was years, years ago. So now I, I was crying. They also were crying. They didn't even know why I'm crying. They also cry. Then all of a sudden, somebody says, Oh! Now I lifted up my head. And there was this being. That was the first time I did not even understand. I didn't know what it was. There was this being. It looks like gold. It looks like fire. It's like a mixture of gold and fire at the same time. And it has this long thing that looks like wings. And it was suspended in the atmosphere. And, and the, the head was down, looking down on us like this. And it was like this. Huge. But the, I, I don't have a, ooh, I don't have a color to describe it. I can't know, but it looks like, it looks like gold. Like gold. It looks like fire at the same time. Like mixture of, and it's suspended. And it's looking down on us. And, uh, and uh, I lifted up my eyes and I saw it. But for some reason, I was not afraid. I know I was not afraid. So I started looking at it. I was like nine. I started looking at it and I was in awe. At first I was sitting. Now I got up and I was looking at it. And in my mind, I thought that I could touch it. And so now I'm, I'm walking closer and I'm lifting up my hand like this. And the children are running. I mean, the dormitory, the, the, the door was like something like this. And everybody is trying to run into the dormitory at the same time. And so there's a stampede at the door. Oh, God. A stampede at the door. And everybody is trying to go in there. And they are calling me, hey, hey, Sylvia, 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 get up, come on. Sylvia, bra, bra, Sylvia, bra. My daddy, and I was... I was in awe because I've never seen anything like that. I was in total awe. So I'm, I'm looking at this and then it was still suspended in the air. I'm just looking at it. Then all of a sudden, the tears 
I've been shedding. I mean, I was crying. It was like the tears just went off my face. I mean, it was just like, it just left my face like that. So I'm just looking at, now I'm smiling and I'm looking at this being. And then I just saw, that because the head was like this, looking down on us. So I just saw it just lift up his head like this and went like this for the second time. And that was it. Didn't see it again. Did not see it again. Angels are so real. So, 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 so real. The woman said, I saw a being. And the countenance, the appearance, there is something about this being that looks like the angel of the Lord. But I was so afraid that I didn't ask his name or where he's coming from. I did not do that. That's what I, I, I believe will continue. All right? Will continue. Verse 7. All right. I have to go. Verse 7 says, But he said unto me, Behold, oh, great. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's do this. But he said unto me, Behold, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and now drink no wine, no strong drink, neither eat any unclean thing, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. It means that this man, oh, he says, Christine said, I'm feeling so cold just by hearing you talk about the angel. <laughs> um, he says, look at it. He says, it means that this man by the name Samson, his birth and his death had already been determined. Look at it. His birth and his death had already been determined. So, in other words, God knows when he's going to be born and he knows when he's going to die. It's already determined. Already determined. And so, hmm, verse 8, I think I will end there. Then Manuah entreated the Lord and said, Oh my Lord, let the man of God which thou didst send come again unto us and teach us what we should do unto the child that shall be born. The woman of God says, the woman says, he has a countenance, but he looks like an angel of God. She said that to the husband. And the husband, of, the husband says, let the man of God. <laughs> the woman is talking about an angel. The man is talking about the man of God. He says, let the man of God that you sent, let him come back. And um, let him tell us what we have to do. In other words, Manoah, being the head, he may not have understood fully what the woman, his wife, said. But. He did this. He sought God. If you were a man watching me, my time is up. If you were a man, I will. If Peggy, I will. If you were a man and you were a husband and you don't know how to seek God for your wife and for your children, something is If you were a woman and you don't know how to go to your husband and talk to your husband, something is wrong. I believe my time is up. We'll have to talk about it another time. My time is up. I have to go to do something. My time is up. Now let's pray. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you. This morning, it is unto you we have guarded every glory, 
belongs to you. Thank you for teaching us. I am asking, oh God, that your people will have peace in their heart. That your people will understand what you are trying to speak to us about. Thank you. I pray that this weekend, Lord, you will be a shield around us. Protecting us from harm. Delivering us from the hands of our enemies. Taking us to a place of security and rest. A place where we can find you. A place where we can communicate with you. A place where you will reveal yourself unto us. Father, I commit everyone listening to me into your hands. I pray that under the blood you will hide them. May your name be exalted and glorified. A million thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord bless you. We will continue. And um, I know some of you are so eager. Like, oh my God. Now let's do this. We are going to be on tonight, 12 midnight for prayer. We'll do midnight prayer. And so 12, um, 12 a.m. Eastern Standard Time will be on for prayer. 12 a.m. I'm encouraging every one of you, if you don't, listen, if you have to go to church, go to church. If you have to go to church, don't get on here and don't go to church. Go to church. But those of you who don't have services uh, in the night, Friday night, will be in church, will be on for midnight prayer. Will be on for midnight prayer, all right? The Lord bless you. Love you. Um, listen, those of you who um, have not sown into the cameras, I'm urging you, encouraging you to sow into it. And then um, we are going on a retreat next year. I, I want every one of you to be part of the retreat. Be part of the retreat. Um, it is in June, um, from the 7th to the 10th of June. I'm asking you that you go on my web, on um, you know, send me an email if you want to be part of the retreat. Um, Sylvia.blessings at AOL.com. Sylvia.blessings at AOL.com. And it's going to be a blessing. I just love you with the love of the living God. I'm saying this. Uh, we need you um, to support us. Um, the broadcast is being shared. Not only that, but it goes on different networks. Different networks. And so um, those networks, we have to pay for it. Um, we don't own the networks. We have to pay for it. So I'm asking that you go on my website, even if it's $10, $20, $50, $100, support us for us to be able to share it on different networks so that others can be blessed as well. Um, the prayer line, it's, no, we'll be on Facebook. I'll be Facebook Live, not prayer line. The reason why I'm not doing the prayer line um, is this. There are some that are outside of the country. They cannot, you know, um, you know, um, <laughs> they cannot be on the prayer line because then they, you know, their phone careers will start charging them huge, huge amounts of money and so we'll be on Facebook. I really wish we'll be on the prayer line. That would have been fantastic so that you hear me pray. I can hear you pray. So let's see how it goes. All right. The Lord bless you. Love you. Um, please. You cannot ask for friends requests. I keep saying that people are not listening. I'm, I've gotten to my limit. And so I'm asking that you follow me on Facebook or subscribe to my YouTube channel on YouTube as well. There are a whole lot of things there that will be a blessing to you. Love you with the love of the, of the Lord. Until then, this is Sylvia Blessings. We will continue with this. Love you. Bye-bye.